at the Interdisciplinary Spine Conference on Spinal Stenosis to be held September 28 and 29 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We will be discussing all treatments of spinal stenosis. That is, we will discuss surgery, we will discuss chiropractic spinal manipulation, we will have the University of Pittsburgh here with their chiropractic and PT department to discuss their interdisciplinary care of spinal stenosis. We will have spinal implant surgeons as to when and what effect they have. We will have a psychologist speaking to us about the depression, the anxiety, the fear avoidance that accompanies chronic back pain as seen in spinal stenosis. We will have a urologist discuss incontinence and how they can control incontinence by sacral S3 nerve root stimulation. We will have interdisciplinary clinic chiropractors speaking to us about treating in an interdisciplinary setting with medical doctors, nutritionists, occupational, physical therapists. The goal being in a very congenial, not competitive environment for all practitioners treating spine pain to come together, discuss how they treat, what their clinical outcomes are, and how best to integrate these into daily care. I would like to point out to you some of the more serious effects of chronic pain and what spinal manipulation can do. First of all, Semenowitz points out that in chronic pain, you actually show atrophy of the cerebral cortex. That is, the brain shrinks. We also know that chronic low back pain patients show lower working memory performance and higher pain catastrophizing. That is, they will allow a small pain to be escalated through the afferentation of a small pain stimulus peripherally to be interpreted in the brain as much worse than it really is. We know that spinal manipulation has been shown to improve cerebral perfusion, that is the circulation of the brain as chronic pain is relieved. We know that, that people with chronic pain become what are called sympathetic overloaded. There are two types of nerves in the autonomic nervous system. There's parasympathetic, which are calming, and sympathetic, which are stimulating. When we talk about chronic pain, we see that these patients become more sympathetic oriented, so that it takes less and less irritation to cause more and more pain. So our goal is to treat and calm the sympathetics, stimulate the parasympathetics via vagal anti-inflammatory reflexes, which will be covered in this conference. We know that we have to lower the use of drugs. For example, one paper shows that one month of oral morphine decreases the volume of the gray matter in the brain, especially in the emotional centers in patients with chronic low back pain. Is there any reason that people with low back pain become depressed? They become anxious. Yes, some even become angry, and it changes their mood and their very personality. We will be discussing that in combination with our psychologists and our clinical practitioners. And all clinical practitioners know that we need more ability to cope with the anxiety, the stress, and the depression that our chronic patients live with. So we know that stress alone, stress alone is sufficient to sensitize the nerves in the periphery, in the spinal cord, and within the brain. We know that this stress enhances pain. It escalates it by its interpretation. We know that when a person is hypersympathetic, their sympathetics are overactive, as happens with chronic pain, that it results in a change which is called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal reflex. That means that they produce more chemical called cortisol from the adrenal glands. 
this cortisol will elevate it will actually actually cortisol elevation is shown have a pathological change leading to intervertebral disc degeneration and a lowering of the disc cells so stress certainly can affect the immune system and also enhance what disc degeneration which everyone over 40 or 50 shows some degree of so we will also be discussing the work of called functional MRI. That is, when we touch a spine as a chiropractor, we do manipulation. The changes are phenomenal. There are responses within a structure called the dorsal root ganglion, which will block pain transmission to the brain. It will stimulate the production of endorphins, dopamine, and serotonin in the brain, which will come down and restrict pain for that patient. So we will discuss how we can prove what's called functional MRI. That is when you do a functional MRI of the brain in someone who's manipulated of the spine. You can actually see what's called BOLD, the blood oxygen level determination change within various structures of the brain such as the cortex, the insula, periaqueductal gray matter. We can actually see these brain structures communicating as we manipulate and touch the periphery of the human body. We will be covering that. That is certainly a great excitement for any practitioner who is treating spine and radicular pain, arm and leg pain, due to spinal stenosis. In my opinion, this conference will bring together the best in surgical and non-surgical treatment of back pain and give knowledge to every practitioner that Monday morning they will plug in in treating their patient. I look forward to studying with you.